and we're back. You tuned into Sport Federation TV. My last guest tonight is Lyndon Julius uh, from the office of the Western Cape Provincial Sports Confederation, who's here to shed some light about how that organization functions specifically. Welcome, Lyndon. Good evening, Lyndon. Good evening. Uh, uh, to you know, it's weird to say welcome because I greeted you <laughs> earlier, <laughs> earlier in the day. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Tell us about your role in, in, in okay, before we go there, yeah. tell us about this organization. This yeah. organization is bringing us the show, yeah. uh, but it, it serves a very key role in, in the sports world in the Western Cape. Yeah, so the, so the Western Cape Provincial Sport Confederation, we are, um, we are the, the custodians or we sort of um, uh, ma administrate and manage the sport within the province. We are members of SASCOC, which is the national, the national body. Um, and then we we have um, what we call uh, districts within within organizations. So we have got uh, federations that these two components make up our the membership. And then the office will then provide support um, administratively, um, you know, arranging of meetings, logistics, that sort of thing, uh, in, on a day to day basis. And then also uh, because we rely on funding, we are non profit or non or public benefit organization. Um, as a civil society, we rely on funding from um, from other stakeholders, and these stakeholders require uh, good governance uh, in the office. You know, the invoices, the the paperwork, the paper trail to be there. And this um, takes a lot of manpower, takes a lot of hours out of the day. Uh, hence, there is an office um, for the Western Cape uh, Sport Con uh, Provincial Sport Confederation. Okay, how long have you been in this office? Yeah, so I started. Uh, I took up the role in uh, August of 2017. So I've only been there for about uh, eight or nine months. Um, and then uh, the the confederation itself is about um, 2013, 2014. It started about. Um, we've slowly but surely grown our staff complement. We are now four staff members, including myself, and then we also have um, all the mod coaches uh, or that uh, the Department of Cultural Affairs and Sport uh, deploy throughout the, the province. Uh, we, uh, we manage and we, we make sure that these coaches uh, get paid on time, that their salary advices or their pay slips are, are issued. Uh, so it, it does take a lot, take a lot of uh, administrat administration uh, from, from our side. Okay. Well, you also have now a very intimate understanding of how the sports bodies function mm. in the Western Cape. Uh, can you describe to us um, how the federations fit in to yeah. this structure? Yeah. So, so, so as I mentioned earlier on, we've got um, we've got the federations, which are the members of our organisation, as well as the districts. So there are six districts: it's Oberberg, uh, Eden, Cape Town. This is the Cape Town Metropole. Uh, then we've got West Coast, and then Oberberg, and then Central Karoo. Uh, and Cape Wineland, sorry. So those six six districts makes up, along with the federations, then they make up our membership. So at the moment we've got 26 uh, of the f of uh, 26 federations that uh, form part of our membership uh, group, and then we have about 12. Mm. Oh, just for the, for the viewers yeah. to know, uh, when Lyndon says uh, federations, he's referring to sports federations. Yeah. So it's athletics or Q sport or badminton. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So so we've got 26 of them, and then we also help federations who do want to fall within the, the structure that has been outlined by SASCOC, we do help them with with aligning according to these criteria and structure. There's obviously not so much a role of the office than it is a role of the of the, ma the MANCO or the, the, the PEC. Um, the, with the, as the office, we just administrate and make sure that um, all this paperwork and all the, the paper trail is there so that should four or five months down the line um, there comes questions around membership and has this member been ratified as a general counsel accepted this membership then the, the executive committee will then come to the office and ask them um, how good has the governance been in terms of, of this paperwork so we've got all these all these federations mm. and these members and they're all aligned uh, with what um, with what SASCOC has, has asked and then also uh, we help them with with, with funding um, possible funding out there uh, we also advise the advise them on on, on how to go about um, you know um, uh, making sure that your athletes like the sport federation tv making sure your athletes get out there and making sure that your athletes your club your federation your district your club your sport organization is 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 um, is known mm. now let's talk to uh, to the importance mm. 
-hmm. of a federation having their house in order what are the benefits of having your house in order so so uh, just off off the cuff it would be uh, you would obviously get the support from uh, from civil society which is um, ourselves, the Western Cape uh, Provincial Sport Organiz uh, Confederation. As an organization, we will then support um, these federations. We will help and, and, and step in and, and with our resources and we will sort of help um, to get these federations that, that need the help mm. uh, to get them uh, what it is they're asking for. But then also um, when it comes to funding, um, certain, certain um, um, ad hoc funding or, or organizations will ask you, uh, are you aligned? Uh, show us um, how many athletes you have. Show us where uh, you have done uh, development in the area. And with our uh, database that we've built up over the, f over the past few years, um, we are able to, or the system that we have in place, we are able to um, show and highlight how exactly our federations have, have if they have, uh, if they have captured this stuff correctly, we are able to tell and show them how it is that they, they have been developed um, mm. to get them. So I think the funding, the funding aspect of our membership is the biggest, uh, the, the biggest benefit that you can get. But there is also other. Um, but uh, you do find that these um, organizations, they, they, there is. There is a market for this, but you need to have your sponsorship model uh, right, and that, that is what exactly what, what, uh, well, where we are moving towards um, in the next couple of years. Okay, so the the clubs or yeah. the the clubs, the leagues, the the federations that get funding, it's uh, because number one, they are an affiliate yeah. to this body. Yeah. Um, and they would have needed to meet certain administrative uh, requirements. In yeah, order so it's tough, so yeah, so it's stuff like um, is your constitution uh, up yes. to date? Um, is your is your founding meeting minutes? Is it there? Do you have an exco that is that is that is active? Um, if you're on a certain category um, sport on on, on Sascock level, uh, Sascock requires you to be in um, X amount of the districts within your region. Mm. Um, so is your is your federation in in those? Uh, in our case, it'll be six. How many how many activity do you have in those six di uh, districts? Um, and then also, if you're not uh, if you're not active in the in the districts, what are you doing to get your provisional status to to full membership? Um, also, is your is your does your name or does your organization align with the demarcation which we mentioned overberg eden mm. you know all of this um, um with what sascock has as as a restructured mm. what is the importance though uh, for you i mean if you if you uh, look at, at the kind of work you deal with the yeah. kind of issues you have to yeah, feel yeah, yeah, yeah. that come to the office i think we are a fairly young organization so not many people associate uh, um, Western Cape sport with our logo yet mm. um, we're definitely moving in the direction where more and more organizations um, are associating sport in the province with our logo I think the the importance of of what we are trying to do what we have achieved over the years is getting all these federations under one roof um, sharing ideas mm. um, getting everyone aligned according to uh, the structure of national because ultimately your athletes are the one that benefit from this you know um, it at any given time, uh, you know, you get calls to the office from uh, from national government or from uh, from Sascock saying that there's there's a possibility that funding might be even within the confederation there could be you know ad hoc funding that's av made available for three or four organisations. But now, how do we know if these athletes are mm. out there? And that's that's why it's important for athletes, uh, clubs, uh, coaches, administrators, managers, to also get in touch with us um, you know via the facebook page mm. or via the office um get on sport federation tv you know because a lot of the time if people uh, of federations mm. or clubs or leagues don't have their house in order a lot of times it's just ignorance not a willingness not yeah. a lack of willingness to get no it no in definitely place. Not, definitely not. it's 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 you, you for and the, 10 years of experience speak, can be 10 I mean, years bad experience i mean too. i mean i mean if i take it myself two years ago i i knew about the district uh, demarcations i knew about the confederation but i didn't know how uh, how strong um the how strong the organization actually is and how strong the organization is cup is becoming and yes. and and now that i'm uh, at the heart of it or inside you can actually see how important it is to align yourself and how important mm. it is to educate yourself on this you know um because it's a door that's it's, uh, open of for course you. of course and you mm. find that there's 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 certain uh, federations that uh, like you say they they it's not that they are that they are unwilling or stubborn to, to align it's that they don't know look um it's it's no longer western province um it's cape town 
town, you know, it's no longer Borland, it's Cape Winelands, you know, it's no longer SV mm. Deer, it's Eden, but but as a confederation, uh, we, we do not we, we do not say that because you call yourself still Borland or because you call, call yourself still um, SV Deer, um, we, we are not going to help you or guide you or, you know, even try and, and assist how we can. Um, it's just that um, when it comes to deciding between, um, you know, the C a Cape Town Federation or Federation that actually aligns as opposed to one that doesn't want to even after being helped, uh, then it becomes difficult, you know, then it becomes a, then, then, it, then it becomes a political space and that as the office, we don't, we don't play in that space. We don't get involved in that is the, that, that is where uh, the elected officials, they will then have to deliberate and, and, mm. and decide on that. And as, 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 as the office, we, we are solely an administrative arm and that's where our ambit lies. That's where we are and we assist um, we assist our stakeholders uh, that we've got partnerships and uh, MOUs with. Um, but then also we, we, we make sure that our federations, our members are looked after because they are our main priority. Mm. The 26 federations that we've got in our membership and the six district councils as well. Well, I mean, considering that this committee and its exco mm. and its affiliates is basically in their infancy, a lot has been achieved in yeah. the in a few years. Yeah, and of course, I mean, we've, we've got a, we, we've now, um, like I said, we, we are staff complement of four. Uh, uh, at, at office, um, we we've just f uh, finalized a couple of policies that hasn't been in place, you know, to help and to guide us and govern us, so that it isn't that the system isn't uh, people driven or person driven, mm. that it is policy driven, and mm. then this policy keeps us accountable, not only to ourselves but also to the exco, the manco, and then also to um, to our stakeholders because. Um, a lot of there is sometimes there's very big sums or big amounts of money involved and we all know mm. um, things can get a bit tricky especially when you're dealing with with public funds and civil society it can get a bit very very tricky and you want to stay above board as far as you can and I think um, uh, just seeing how federations have embraced you know this this uh, this machine that we're trying to get going um, it's very uh, it's very exciting to see mm. and it's very um it's empowering also like uh the we also big on, on on not only transforming in the sense of of demographics but also in the sense of getting women into leadership positions you know getting women um at the forefront and not just in sport that is predominantly uh, um, seen or traditionally seen as a women's sport, mm. but getting them into leadership positions, not only in these codes, but and also secretaries. and not just secretaries, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but also getting them on on the on, on on executive councils, you know, getting them on the PEC, getting them on the board, mm. uh, getting them um, to make decisions, and they're not and not feel that this is a male-driven society because that's definitely what one of our main objectives or one of the Manco's main objective is um, is to push very hard at getting um at getting these and writing the wrongs or just getting the balance uh, restored yeah yeah excellent i wish we had more time because I there's do, yes. so much of areas yeah. that we can speak about and delve further into but maybe you'll join us again i will yeah before you go yes it's somebody's birthday yes i was gonna say now yeah just uh, a very uh, a very happy birthday to our president mr jp nodia he celebrated his birthday yesterday and i hope he, he had a good one uh, i think he thought that we we've forgotten about it um i i didn't forget about it it's just like halfway through the day you realize oh, i just slipped your mind yeah and then eventually we we or well eventually but when he finally settled down we managed to get him some cake and we, we celebrated. I think he enjoyed it. Oh, that's what he said. Yeah. So I, I hope, Mr. President, you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, indeed. Happy birthday, uh, Mr. J.P. Nodia, President of the Western Cape um, Confederation, Sport, Sport Confederation. And um, not only a, a, a gifted martial artist, uh, but also Karate. the brainchild. Karate. Yeah, karate. Kyokushin. <laughs> Kyokushin. Thank you, Lyndon. I would have probably gotten yeah. mail for saying that. Uh, Kyokushin master and uh, the brainchild of Sports Federation TV. Uh, we wish you all the best in your year ahead. And uh, that's it for tonight, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, you can catch the show every Friday night at 9 p.m. on CTV, channel 263, repeated Saturdays at 8 a.m. And remember to like our Facebook page at Sport Federation TV. Whatever sport you're playing this weekend, lick a spiel. And if you haven't found a sport yet, we hope you find a sport that's just perfect for you. Good night. Thank you for tuning in.